Hi everyone, uh, my name is Julian Storm. I'm the youngest son of Alex Storm, uh, the author of the book uh, Seaweed and Gold, which I have with me today. It's uh, about his treasure hunting stories, that he, the treasure ships that he discovered around Cape Breton, as well as the undiscovered treasure ships that he never found, but he knew they were there. Alright, so what I'm doing today is uh, something a little bit different for the Facebook site. Um, so basically I'm going to be, uh, it's my first time ever doing this, so you kind of bear with me a bit. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Google Earth. And with Google Earth, I'm going to be uh, talking about one of the sto undiscovered treasure ships that he uh, tried to search for, but never uh, uncovered the, uh, the treasure ship itself. So the, the treasure ship is called Saint Michel. It's one of the ships that got away, I guess you could say. Uh, so let's get started, and I hope you enjoy the, my first ever video blog. And I hope there's more to come to. So enjoy. All right, so welcome to Google Earth. What we are going to start with is the history of the Saint Michel. The Saint Michel was dispatched from France to Fortress Louisbourg with the purpose of resupplying and delivering additional finances for the military within Fortress Lewisburg, as well as all the surrounding military bases in Cape Breton. The reason for this was that a large invading force from the United States and the British Navy was laying siege to Fortress Lewisburg in the spring of 1745. Now, the Saint Michel had a reported amount of coinage on board that was equal to the value of 2,000 Louis d'or, Louis d'or were gold coins, so it was basically a treasure ship. Now, when the Saint Michel arrived at Fortress Louisbourg, it was too late, as the fortress had fallen and the British Navy were now masquerading as French ships in an attempt to capture real French ships and steal their treasure. The British warships, who now controlled the coastal waters, descended on the Saint Michel. She narrowly escaped capture and sheared off towards the southwest. Eventually the chase was broken off by her pursuers as nightfall was arriving and her disappearance into the heavy fog, which is quite common in the area, allowed her escape. What happened next to the Saint Michel was reported by the surviving crew members. She had run aground on the southern coast of Cape Breton at Point Michaud and had become a total wreck in the middle of the night, the survivors had made it to shore and into the woods where they had met up with friendly natives. The survivors eventually made their way back to Quebec to report what had happened. There was very little history or much written about the event of the Saint Michel. My father had said that it would have just disappeared into obscurity if not for a hurricane which swept that part of the coast in 1899. The hurricane cut away at the beaches around Point Michaud and exposed what was hidden underneath, gold coins. The locals called it the gold field and had found 76 gold louis d'or in perfect condition, all dating around the 1740s, which places the Saint Michel in this area. The gold coins were scattered around and not in any specific location, based on what the locals told my father. Now, the gold field was in two possible areas according to the documentation in my father's book. And you can see that from where I am highlighting it on the map. When my father arrived and began a search of the area, what he was looking for was evidence of a shipwreck. What this means is a large concentration of cannons and anchors and a ship's ballast. The ship's ballast will be basically a large amount of rocks Every ship had this at the time. The ballast would be located in the hull to keep the ship balanced in the water. My dad, of course, explored the gold find areas, but with poor visibility in the water, nothing was found. He also explored the interior of Point Michaud Cove, and he thought they found the ship's ballast, but it turned out to be a natural formation, so their excitement quickly turned into disappointment. Alex then searched the Basque Islands area, where the locals reported that a large iron wheel and cannon had been seen, and the Gros Bass Reef just west of Point Michaud. But again, they didn't find anything. Keep in mind, too, that during all of this, my father only spent about four days searching for the Saint Michel, 
and there was a lot of kelp and seaweed making it difficult for them to give it a thorough and complete search. So there was a lot of areas not searched that could easily conceal a wreck site. There were many promising areas that were left completely untouched. And what is really exciting about that is that they are probably still completely untouched to this day. Now, my father pointed out in his book that there were other areas of interest to him, but were never searched, such as the Red Island and Michon Ledges, the Shag Ledge, and at the bay at the mouth of the Grand River, where the locals reportedly seen a cannon slightly to the east of the river's mouth and about 15 feet of water, and the big neighbor shoal. Of course, in my father's book, he also talks about other ships in that area that had also met their demise. So you may be looking for the St. Michel, and you might accidentally find another treasure ship laying there. So that's what you're getting in Cape Breton. Lots of undiscovered treasures still waiting to be found. Now, Point Michel was an area that is easily accessible to the public. There is a great beach there, and surfing is popular. If any, also, if anything is found there, and with the new maritime laws, it does have to be reported to the Nova Scotia government, and they will probably take it without compensation. I hope you liked this video blog, and it is my first ever. Now, there is another place with even more shipwrecks up at St. Paul Island, and I am thinking about doing another video blog about that location next. Uh, if you want to hear it, uh, leave a like or encouraging comment down below on my or on my Facebook site. The Facebook site is called Seaweed and Gold, and it has the same title as my father's book. And if you are interested in getting the full story of the St. Michel, you can get the book online. And it is also being sold in a number of stores throughout Cape Breton. So again, thanks for watching and enjoy reading the book.